Hey, what is up guys? It's your boy Speed here and today I'm going to be teaching you guys how to play Support Weaver. I think this hero is one of the best supports in the game right now. We're going to be watching Puppy play it as a 5, but I'm sure if you guys watched the position 4 tier list, you know that I also think that this hero is one of the best position 4s in the game as well. So everything you're going to be learning here today is going to teach you about either one of the roles. You might think like, oh, this is some off meta thing. No, Weaver has always kind of been a support. Not always, but like for years now, this hero has gone in and out of the meta as a support. So it's definitely not some like really crazy idea. This is not some like new insane broken build, even if that's the title. <laughs> this is just kind of the way to go right now. This hero is in a really good spot and let's talk about why. By the way, guys, if you want to become absolutely broken, well, what you need to do is sign up to the Game Leap website down below right now. The reason why you should do that is because every single day we post a new video there. Content that you simply just will never get on YouTube, we post every single day to the website. It's really top tier stuff. I'm very proud of what I make over there. We also have other creators, many of my great friends who are top tier Dota players creating guides about different heroes, different roles, different items, skill builds, talent builds, everything you need to know to get to the next rank. So if you feel a little bit lost, you're a little bit stuck, click the link down below. I'll see you guys there. And now let's get into the video. All right, let's start it off with starting item build. First of all, starting item build, you're gonna be going for urn as soon as possible. This build by Puppy, I do think it's a little bit weird only because it doesn't include stick. I guess he doesn't know his lane for sure this game, but he ends up being against a Mars Shadow Demon. So even though the general idea here is that you want to be rushing uh, the urn as soon as possible, which is why Sage's Mask and Circlet both build into it. The thing is, I still highly recommend buying a stick if the lane is this good, right? Shadow Demon Mars, you're going to get 10 charges every three to four minutes. I mean, obviously it could be even faster than that depending on Shadow Poison. So um, yeah, just keep that in mind. After that though, you're gonna instantly ship out more Tangos and eventually you're gonna ship out a South. So just keep that in mind, right? He ships out another set of Tangos, sh ships out a Sentry, right? That's obviously to unblock the small camp or block the large camp, probably block the large camp on Radiant. This is a quick thing, a uh, bit of a side note, this isn't Weaver specific, but on Radiant, I generally recommend blocking the large camp because you can't ever use it to pull. But honestly, on Dire, if you are in a winning lane, like a heavy winning lane, and you know for a fact or you think that the wave is going to shove in, right, this wave shoves in, then you can actually use this to pull up. So always just keep that in mind when you're playing on Dire as a 5. Don't always block this camp. If you think you're going to be shoving in the wave with like a CMQ and a jug spin or something like that, then having this camp open in case this gets blocked is really valuable. All right, getting into the laning stage, basically you're just playing around Sakuchi and shipping down people with Sakuchi. I mean, it's just a solid damage spell. 100 damage on a 12 second cooldown for 60 mana. You can imagine why it's good. Like the numbers are just good. 100 damage on everything. It's gonna shove in the wave, which sometimes can be good for putting pressure and it's just damage. So he comes in through the back here. Make sure you end the Sakuchi always in a good place. Um, as you see in this clip, from Puppy, he ends the Sakuchi retreating. Do not man up on the back half of Sakuchi. Your hero is really slow, okay? You're really slow. You're a ranged hero with mediocre armor. You don't man up. So he goes in, it was running out. It doesn't even bother going for the Shadow Demon, just disengages. And for the most part, you don't really do anything early on, right? You're not some ogre, you're not someone dying. You could, you know, poke and prod with Sakuchi. You can secure the range creep of Sakuchi if you need to. But other than that, you're just chipping, right? Hit some bolts of Sakuchi. And then he's going to come to the side. Even here, I don't know why he positioned like this. Uh, I guess it beats a little bit of attention. He's just kind of messing with them. Can even sneak in an auto or two on the Shadow Demon. Doesn't end up getting it. But yeah, this is it. Don't make it more complicated. Don't dive at level 1. Keep it chill. So next up at level 2, he actually takes Gemini Attack, which is the double attack ability. It's good. The reason why he does it, though, is because he doesn't have a good setup for the Swarm. So what your average player does wrong on Weaver is that they just check out the Swarm, which is Weaver's Q, at any point in time, right? They'll just throw it out. It doesn't have much of a purpose. You need to throw it out in coordination with the Stun or a Slow. That can even be time dilation, right? Which I, they're, they're going to do at some point, so you'll see it. But in this lane, like Void, especially at level 1, level 2, he's going to take his Q and he's going to take his E, right? In this case, he even actually did take time dilation, funny enough, so maybe he could have taken the Swarm. But with the Wave pushing in and usually not having a Disable, typically you're going to take your Gemini attack. You're just going to harass. And then at level three, if you get a disable or a rotation comes in, you can take the swarm. Usually I recommend at level three, you're one, one, one. Anyway, I like having a point in each spell at level three. That's the way to go. But yeah, in general, if you have a disable, take swarm. If you can go aggressive, take swarm. If you can't, and it's more of a chip game, then Gemini attack is the way to go. So coming here, we're going to see our first bugs usage of the laning stage. Want to make sure you guys can see a great example of one to actually cast the bugs 
The value in bugs, the best value is when they're going on your teammates or you have a disable. Optimally both, because when that's the case, then they're going to commit and the longer the fight, the better bugs are, right? Especially if it stays on them. So he goes in here, wraps around the side, still hits him with Sakuchi, which I like. A lot of players would have been like, oh, just get a good bugs. Nope. Get all the damage you can early game. Don't miss the Sakuchi. Gets the damage, bugs him up. Very nice double bugs. And this, this engagement's over. Once you hit a two-man bugs like this, I mean, it's also a good time dilation, right? Really good time dilation lane against Mars and, and Shadow Demon, especially Shadow Demon. But um, yeah, you can see this engagement is absolutely unplayable for Shadow Demon and Mars. And here's where the bug comes into play. Mars currently at negative two armor. You know, I mean, that's just the thing. Like his physical resistance is negative 9%. Negative two armor literally makes people take 9% more damage from physical attacks, which is insane. That is insane. And they get melted. Like literally look at the damage. That is why this hero is insane. Four attacks is too much in the early game. People can't afford to stand still for four attacks. That is why all you got to make sure is that they're committed even slightly. You bug them up, and, and the engagement's over. The spell is that good. I'm not over-exaggerating it. Like, it is like one of the most ridiculous spells conceptually in Dota. So don't waste it. It's a 40 second cooldown. Couple more things to touch up on before we move on to the mid game. I just want you guys to keep in mind that Weaver is incredibly good at contesting power runes. He's also incredibly good at contesting water runes. So just water runes, power runes, bounty runes, contest them as Weaver if you have the downtime. Right, let's say Swarm is on cooldown and you can't pull, or you know, it's six minutes and you don't want to you want to make sure they can't get a haste or a DD, whatever, go contest the runes. Sakuchi is obviously mega value when it comes to sniping runes. So yeah, just do that. In terms of items, keep in mind after the urn, you want to tank up a little bit. I like this. A lot of players will go straight into the vessel, and I, I think if it's some like godly vessel game, like a morphling or a huskar, something along those lines. You can rush Vessel and buy no small items, but in a game like this where, like, yeah, it's, I mean, it's good against Kunkka because of his high HP, same thing with Mars. Maybe it's good against Leshrac if he goes like a, you know, an Eternal Shroud rush, but he's probably not going to do that. So he doesn't need the Vessel right away. In fact, in this game, he doesn't even end up going into Vessel, even though I think that's almost always the best Weaver support item. It just lets you solo kill people. He ends up going Orchid. We'll talk about why when we get more towards that, that point, but, um, yeah, let's keep going. The next thing I want to point out. All right, let's look at the map, okay? Can Weaver set up plays? Frick no. Weaver is not a, like some ganker, okay? That is absolutely not what this hero does, which is why I know for a fact most people are just going to hard grief because they're going to like try to set up kills and they're going to like, mm, I can't slow them. I can't stun them. I don't know what I do. You do a lot of damage. So right here, his team's just chilling, right? They, they didn't have Chrono, they didn't have Razor ulti, no Earth Spirit ulti, they have Ravage, but honestly, it's much less important than the other ultis, especially the Earth Spirit and the Razor in the early game. And so, yeah, he's just like, yeah, I'm gonna chill. You farm very quickly, you jungle quickly. Like, Sakuchi is just a value spell. Just keep in mind, when you are jungling, when you're trying to flash from in this hero, what you need to do is Sakuchi as much as humanly possible, end the Sakuchi a little bit off the camp so you don't tank too much damage, and use every Gemini attack on the large creep. I was coaching someone recently on Weaver. I noticed that they didn't do this properly, so I want to make sure everyone does it right uh, for maximum efficiency. And yeah, he even is willing to use bugs here, throwing them up like this uh, to hit both camps. It, the only problem is if you do that, often it will just kill off the bugs. Like the bugs often just die. You can even see here, didn't get too much value out of it. So make sure if you're going to do that, where you drag the camps together, that honestly you're on dire or you bring the camps closer first, because otherwise it just doesn't do that much. In this next upcoming fight after we farmed another jungle camp, keep in mind 32 CS in minute 12, this is definitely something you guys can thrive for, you know? It's pretty impressive numbers. But this team fight is really a great example of what happens when Weaver goes in check. Leads the fight with Sakuchi. Remember, you want to use Sakuchi early in the fight to support Weaver. You shouldn't worry too much about getting caught for the most part, so like it's okay to go in a little bit deep. Generally, the main goal is to go in about second, right? You want to, you don't want to go in first. You want to be a clockwork, right? You're not a clockwork. You're not a tide hunter. You're more of like a, a go in second and, and then start chipping. But you can see in this fight here, finds the Mars, bugs him up. This is the only time I think you can solo bugs. Usually, I wouldn't recommend solo bugging, especially if you're going to go the build that he goes eventually, which is actually leaving the queue at level one. But nonetheless, you can see just no one wants to go on Weaver, right? Like, 
Kunga doesn't want to X-boat the four Weaver. It's not optimal. Unless he kept his entire team in position and was like a free kill, then he'd probably do it. But in a teamfight scenario, he doesn't really want to. So Puppy is easily able to clean up a just a solo kill, essentially, onto a half HP Mars, because that's how Sakuchi works. He's able to earn up the Lesh here, finish off that kill, and then keep going if he wants to. You can imagine if the fight is in an open area or on his side of the map, he probably would have ended up getting a triple or even an ultra kill on a support hero just by using Sakuchi as much as humanly possible and hitting a decent bugs. Another thing I want you guys to do in your pubs is tank ganks and bait, okay? This hero is hard to gank for very obvious reasons. I don't even have to explain it to you, okay? It goes max movement speed, I I'll explain, and goes invis. And then it full heals and time, like goes back in time, okay? It has escape mechanisms, we can agree on this. It builds like decent amounts of tank items, okay? Even in this game, he's not going a tank build. And yet, you'll see in this mid clip here, people mess up. People mess up. The lower MMR you are, the more people mess up. Especially when you are split pushing, if people try to gank you, 9 times out of 10, they will not bring enough to chain stun you down which is what you need against Weaver, right? You have to burst him, for obvious reasons. Most of the time it will not come. So in your pubs, running down side lanes, uh, you know, running up hills with Sakuchi, taking risks, please take risks, bait rotations. Look at this. I mean, they try to boat combo him. Yeah, they miss. Like obviously he would have died if they didn't miss, but even if he dies there, like who cares? He's a level nine Weaver. They're like four man ganking him, right? And as I said, people mess up when it comes to Weaver. People mess up. Yes, he shouldn't have missed that boat combo. We can all agree on that. But still, providing vision, just keeping bugs on people, making the enemy team nervous. You're so good at that, right? This hero is like so good at it because of how Sakuchi works. It's just invis max movement speed. What more can you ask for? I do just want to remind you guys this is a good clip, right? So like this is right after that mid fight there or, you know, him avoiding the mid gank. What does he do next? Shifts to top, runs to top. He understands that Weaver is just so good at this, you know, it's much harder for a Tidehunter or a Razor, I mean Razor's not too bad, but it's much harder for, you know, a Tidehunter to get to the top side of the map and push in this top wave. And if Tidehunter was going to do it, and he either walks through a ward or just, you know, goes top by the time people are ready to TP, then he's going to die. And so Weaver instead is, is really safe at doing this, right? Easily shoving the wave. Make sure you prep the creeps for Sakuchi, by the way. If you don't know what I mean by that, you want to even out the HPs, right? So right here, instead of hitting this melee creep, he hits the range creep twice, Sakuchi's through and secures them both and gets out. Please do that. Your hero thrives with items and it's hard to gank. If you're not split pushing and shoving waves, you're not doing well. I'm not saying don't team fight, I'm just saying in between team fights. That is the skill. The best of the best know how to do it quick in between team fights. They do it quick, they avoid the gank, and then they get back to their team. Not always, but in a game like this where he's obviously comfortable fighting, yeah, he should go. And once again in this team fight here, you get to see him making the enemy team panic. Gets a really nice bugs here, hitting Lesh and Jakiro. Just such a high value bugs. I mean, it's going to instantly put Jakiro to negative armor. Leshrac is a very bad hero when it comes to armor. Um, even 10 right now seems high. So like, I, I, I don't know. But like Leshrac is going to go into the negatives real quick because he can't really auto attack the bug. He has no attack speed. So he's just done. Like, look at this Lesh's HP in, in, in this fight. I mean, he's done. Like, insta dies. I mean, yeah, he gets disrupted, but just melts, right? It, it literally looks like a stick of butter. Now, keep in mind, Puppy's skill build this game is definitely a little bit unorthodox. Generally, what people do is they max out Sakuchi, which is necessary. Then they max out Bugs, and they take their Talon at 10. He skipped Talon at 10. He ended up maxing out Gemini Attack instead. And the reason why I think he's doing this is this guy ended up buying Vessel. So this guy goes Vessel. He's like, all right, I can't go Vessel. What's my item? Like, what's a good disruption item? And honestly, I kind of like the Orchid here. I think it's a bit weird, but if he finds Jakiro or finds the Shadow Demon in the back of the fights at the start of the fight, he easily could solo kill them with uh, with Orchid and the maxed out E. Because Bugs doesn't really scale well. The reason why you generally take Bugs and max it is not even necessarily for like the numbers, because the attack damage buff is nothing. The attack frequency is honestly okay, but it's nothing crazy. It's mostly just a cooldown. And so you can use it to push in waves, you can use it to scout, and generally you're going to have two of them during a fight, so that's why people max it. But if you want to go more of a right click variant, then you definitely can max the E. And as you see in this team fight here, the disruption power is insane. 
prevents the disruption. I mean, beautifully done, right? Absolutely perfect work at timing out there. Shadow Demon here. That's why he's a professional player, gentlemen. But yeah, yeah, no disruption onto the left Shrek. Doesn't even kill him. Obviously, the reason being is because Shadow Demon's awareness is really high. You can imagine in, in your average pub, if you have bugs, which he didn't because he used them and he didn't max them out. But you can imagine in your average pub, if you manage to flank the backline like this, find a support bug orchid earn them. I mean, they're just going to die. Like they're just going to die, especially if you have a vessel in an orchid. I mean, they're going to die. This is like solo kill central, right? This build here. And yeah, that's the way you should be playing. Find the outside of the fight. Don't get stuck in the middle, please, guys. If you play Weaver support and you are running at the first person you see, you are going to feed. You will die. You will not do well. Don't do it. Do not fall for the trap. If you're tied under Ravage of someone, you probably shouldn't follow it up, right? Unless it's in a side lane and they're alone. But if it's a five on five, play the outsides. Play around. Get a good bugs. Get a two, three man bugs when you're, you know, Tidehunter, your Underlord, your Wraith King's getting gone on and move on from there. You can see, for instance, this is such a good freaking bugs. He makes a bit of a prediction play here, understanding where the supports are probably going to be in this fight. Also, I think he ends up clipping someone else on the retreat here, but it gets it onto the Lash. Such a key target. Any of these like low armor, low attack speed mid heroes just get annihilated. For instance, like a Zeus, if you bug Zeus in team fights, I mean, it's so bad for him. It's so bad for his armor, but ends up connecting on a four. I mean, like, I, I don't want to say the fight ends when you hit a four man bugs, but like it really is bad. Like, I, I know it, I, for some reason, just clicking on people's armor after they get bugged just makes me happy. You can even see here, he's just quickly going to head into the negatives. If if the bug goes unchecked and you max it out, people always will go into the negatives and then you just basically two shot them. Another quick Weaver tip, uh, when you're going to take Roshan, you generally only want to cast bugs after it has been tanked. If you cast it before and Roshan targets the bug, it will kill the bug. Um, so even in this clip here, no one was actually fully tanking when the bug connected, so Roshan started hitting it, which is it's not actually that bad. Um, as long as you have like bashes and stuns, then it's not too bad if the bug gets targeted. It, it tanks up a bunch of damage, but yeah. Another reason why Weaver's just such a good hero. It's like, look at their team comp. They don't really have Roshan heroes, they don't. But when you drop the bug on Rosh, his armor just starts dropping very quickly. Like very, very quickly. You could look at it. I mean, it's insane. He has plus seven armor, drops him almost 14, 15 armor. And this is with not a maxed out bugs, right? This bugs is like, 40% worse than what it is when it can be maxed out in terms of the attack speed. So yeah, just just such a versatile hero. And last but not least, let's end off the video with a beautiful team fight execution. You can see right here, you, I, I love his movement, love his positioning. You guys know what I was talking about? I mean, you were listening, hopefully you were listening. I'm like, don't go to the middle, don't go to the middle. Perfect fight. Tide Hunter getting gone on, what would most supports do? They'd run here. They'd start auto attacking like Mars. They'd get clipped by some Lesh stun. They get clipped by some Torrent, whatever it is, some arena, it doesn't matter. They get hit by some dumb AOE spell. They die and they, they look like a noob. Instead, a little bit of patience comes to the outside. Look at his bugs. Oh, this is the greatest bugs of all time. Almost hits all five, but yeah, just annihilating the back line here. Drops the urn, basically kills Lesh. I think he lives through this as well. Yeah. Whew. Insane. Just such a busted hero. Even the fact, just the pure fact that it has a 9 strength talent at level 10. It's just such a good talent for a hero like Weaver at level 10. So dang good. But nonetheless, hopefully this inspires you guys to pick Weaver support. If you're curious about items to buy after your vessel, which is often what I recommend going, as I said, this is a bit of an off-brand build, an off-meta build. Still think it's pretty good in games like this where you can solo kill the supports, but the most standard item is going Ags. After the Ags, you buy Aether, and essentially lets you use time lapse on teammates, which is really good. It's like an Aegis on your teammates if you're good with it. All right, thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one, and I'm out. Peace. And that's all, but remember, before you leave, come on, before you tune out, subscribe to the Game Leap website where we are going to help you get to the next rank. If you're stuck, click the link down below, and I'm out. Peace.